Take any traditional description of hell from any religion, from any work of fiction, and compare it to the surface of Venus. Venus will always win. The surface is 90% basalt, and around 65% of it is covered in a mosaic of volcanic activity. Though the planet has some tectonics, featuring faults and subduction, it doesn't have global plate tectonics the way we do here on Earth. Despite that, it still boasts the most volcanoes of any planet in the solar system. And yes, that includes Earth. We're going to dive into what makes the hellish landscape of Venus so unique, but first be sure to like, comment your favorite thing about Venus, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Echoes of Olympus Mons, and this is Science Get. we can tell, there are more than 3,000 volcanic features on Venus, and it appears as if the planet is essentially resurfaced every so often by these flows of magma. One such event is thought to have happened 500 million years ago. What's odd about Venus is that, although there are more than 1,600 volcanoes on the surface of the planet, none of them appeared to be active when we first started looking at the planet. Most, in fact, appeared to be extinct. That is, save for one, Ma'at Mons. Radar sounding from the Magellan probe revealed that ash flowed near the summit of Venus's tallest volcano and near the northern flank. But it would be pretty strange if only one volcano on Venus was active, wouldn't it? Thankfully, new evidence seems to suggest that volcanism is alive and well on the Earth's sister planet. Remember, we mentioned in one of our first videos that research on Venus save for long-distance astronomy basically stopped in the 1980s after the Russians landed their last probe on the planet. The debate about whether Venus has harbored volcanic activity stretches back to the 1990s. Magellan showed us all a surface hot enough to melt lead, and one that was littered with volcanoes. But it wasn't until 2010 when Europe's Venus Express spacecraft revealed evidence that fresh lava flows had flowed as soon as 250,000 years ago, a common byproduct of volcanic activity here on Earth on Venus. However, the data provided by Venus Express is not complete, and scientists didn't really think that there was a smoking gun for volcanic activity. Experiments on olivine here on Earth were performed not long after this statement was made. Justin Filiberto, a planetary scientist at the Lunar and Planetary Institute in Houston, and his team took this green mineral typically found in volcanic rock and heated it up to 1600 degrees Fahrenheit before exposing it to oxygen. This caused the olivine to turn into iron oxide. This is essentially what would happen to the olivine if it were to erupt from a volcano on Venus, suggesting that if olivine were discovered on the surface of the planet, then it would mean volcanic activity was current, not something of the distant past. Dr. Filiberto then turned to the archived data from Venus Express. What he and his team found was that the observed hotspots of potential volcanic activity recorded by the spacecraft, the ones that had previously been dated back to 250,000 years, contained olivine. Incredibly, this meant that the lava flows had to have only been a few years old, at most. Some doubt does still remain, but, and I'm even getting tired of saying this, we'll have to send a probe to Venus to find out for sure if Filiberto's findings are indeed accurate. But enough about the history of volcanism on Venus. Let's talk about some actual volcanoes. are several types of volcanoes on Venus. So-called pancake domes, ticks, no, not that one, and banded flows that seem to flower out in thin layers, litter the surface of the planet. While the planet does also have shield volcanoes, these volcanoes look pretty alien when compared to their earthly counterparts. The lava itself isn't quite like it is here on Earth, either as they're full of gases. The lava found on Venus is also rich with quartz and granite, which is quite a bit different than here on Earth as well, where most volcanoes spew basalt-rich lava. On Earth, the main thing driving the explosive power of volcanoes is water, and that's in short supply on Venus. This doesn't mean that Venusian volcanoes can't be explosive, but so far we haven't really seen any evidence to suggest that they are. But most of the volcanoes on Venus that aren't of the shield variety are actually pancake domes. Yeah. Pancake Domes. Cue the title card. The Pancake Dome volcanoes on Venus are truly strange. They appear to be just as common as shield volcanoes and tend to form clusters that look like craters to the untrained eye. Thankfully, our eyes are so very well trained. Many of these pancake domes aren't found anywhere near Venus's shield volcanoes 
For some reason, they tend to propagate in the lowland plains. What's odd about these structures is that they tend to be very wide, ranging from 22 kilometers wide to as large as 100 kilometers wide, but only rise about one kilometer above the surface. All of them have a slight bowl shape to them and feature a single pit somewhere near the center. These pits are the vents where the gases and lavas will erupt from, and they're pretty similar to those found on shield volcanoes, with one key difference. These vents did not form with the volcano. The domes came first, probably from a very slow eruption of viscous lava that bubbled from the Venusian surface before finally shrinking. The pits would have then formed by gases trying to escape the pancake dome. This is very different from the way volcanoes form on Earth. Ticks! No, not that one. Tick volcanoes are similar to pancake domes because they are mostly flat with striations and faults running away from the main dome of most of the volcanoes, forming the legs of the tick as it were. No, not that one. They can range from 66 kilometers wide in some areas and 22 kilometers wide in others, creating a variety of different shapes in the Venusian surface not found in the pancake domes. As an aside, when I was doing research for this episode, I went to show one of these tick volcanoes to my fiance, and she refused to look at it at first because she thought it was a volcano that spewed ticks. She's adorable. The main difference between ticks and pancakes is that tick volcanoes tend to feature small radial ridges, and the heads of most of these so-called ticks... <sighs> I said ticks, not the tick, are formed by a series of collapsed pits. The origin of where the leg ridges came from is also a bit of a mystery. There are a couple theories that could explain this, though. One is that they may actually be avalanche scars, and the second is that they're dikes running away from the body of the volcano. The second theory doesn't really explain why these ridges form dikes instead of lava flows, but Venus is pretty strange, so there is probably some undiscovered mechanism at work here. This leads to the very last unusual volcano type on Venus, what I've suddenly decided to call banded flower volcanoes. Banded flower volcanoes feature banded flows that flower out from a series of different locations. They also tend to be pretty large too, ranging up to about 100 kilometers wide, but also remain pretty flat, like the pancake and tick volcanoes we just covered. Stop that! The domes of these unusual volcanoes are composed of multiple fan-shaped lava flows followed by a much larger flow with a banded surface. The flow heights for this lava can range from 120 to 540 meters, and the overall shape of these flows seems to suggest that the lava doesn't have an easy time getting away from the volcano. The largest of these flows are pretty thin, but appear to behave similarly to thicker lava flows on Earth, which is really, really strange. These banded flower volcanoes say it with me, will make the term official, appear to be one of the rare instances of a non-basaltic lava flow on Venus. But what's truly odd is that non-basaltic lavas would ordinarily require a decent amount of water. But Venus doesn't really have much of that, so it's unclear what they're composed of. So Venus's volcanic activity is pretty odd, isn't it? I for one can't wait for NASA and the ESA and whoever else to send more probes to the planet. Who knows what other secrets it holds. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and comment below your favorite aspect of Venus's volcanism. And be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss an episode of ScienceGet. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.